Hi everyone, I'm Jan with the Prince George County Memorial Library System. Thank you for joining us for another Children's Readers Advisory. The stories I tell you about today are what we call historical fiction, meaning the events in the story actually happen, although the characters often are made up. My first book is called A Slip of a Girl by Patricia Riley Giff. Miss Giff is a two-time Newbery Honor winner, which is an award given out every year to the best of children's stories from the previous year. Told in verse, I found this story easy to follow. Set in Ireland in the 1890s, Anna, her special needs sister, and the father must find a way to survive in the aftermath of the Great Famine, also known as the Potato Famine. When they end up in prison, Anna finds a way to escape with her sister and must find a way to save her family. In reading this story, you will find an excellent story of a girl with self-determination to overcome any obstacle. Again, this is called A Slip of a Girl. My next two stories are about space. This first one is called We Dream of Space by Erin Antrada Kelly. This historical fiction story takes place in 1986 during the upcoming launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Cash, Fitch, and Bird Thomas are siblings in the seventh grade. Each has their own anxieties. Cash is in danger of failing the seventh grade for the second time. Fitch has an explosive temper that he doesn't understand, and Bird, Fitch's, Fitch's twin, dreams of being NASA's first female astronaut, but feels like no one ever notices her. Told in alternate points of view, as you read this story, you'll feel you understand each of the siblings better and why they are who they are. And again, this is called We Dream of Space. My next book is called I Love You, Michael Collins by Lauren Bartez Logsteed. The events surrounding this story are based on the true events of the 1969 Apollo moon landing. Mamie's teacher tells her students they will spend time writing letters to the astronauts. All the girls in her class think Neil Armstrong is so cute, while the boys think Buzz Aldrin has the best name. Mamie finds a connection with Michael Collins, the third astronaut. He comes so close to the moon, but must man the ship, as Mamie does when her family slowly starts leaving the house thinking someone else is looking after her. She finds comfort in writing about what's going on in her little world. Until her family finally comes home, see how Mamie survives with only her cat and her best friend Buster. And again, this book is called, I Like You, I Love You, Michael Collins. Now, my next three books take place during World War II. This first one is called Lifeboat by Susan Hood. And this story has received many wonderful reviews. The author, Patricia Riley Gift, that I mentioned earlier, said this book is brilliantly told in verse. Readers will love Ken Sparks, one of the boys on the boat. And then Kirk's Review says, the story is lyrically terrifying and even at times funny. A richly detailed account of a little known event in World War II. And then School Library Journal says this book is an edge of your seat survival tale. When the Nazis start bombing London, England during World War II, Many of the children's parents send them off to live somewhere safe, like in the country, or they send them to Canada. 
This book describes a group of kids in the trip on a boat leaving for Canada. The Nazis torpedo the boat and the children must find a way to survive in life boats until the allies can rescue them. At the end of this book, you'll find pictures of the children and actual articles about their ordeal. You'll find hope and compassion in this well-crafted book called Lifeboat. Okay, my next story is called How I Became a Spy, A Mystery of World War II London. Erdy, an English boy volunteering as an air raid messenger, never set out to become a, a spy during World War II. When he accidentally bumps in, into Eleanor, an American girl in London with a father, he realizes she dropped the book she was carrying. As Bertie starts reading the notebook, he finds codes and ciphers in it and knows the book belongs to a spy. Later, he and Eleanor become friends, and with another friend, know they have to decipher the codes to stop the double agent from spilling secret information to the Nazis. By the end of the book, you will learn the difference between a code and a cipher. Also, you will learn many ways to write codes and ciphers yourself. And again, this book is called How I Became a Spy. A Mystery of World War II London. And then my next book happens during World War II but doesn't focus so much on the war. It's called All He Knew by Helen Frost. Miss Frost is a Prince Honor writing author, winning author, this award is given out yearly for the best teen book from the previous year, though this book is not a teen book. Henry, deaf from an early age, refuses to talk even though he does understand language. The book is also told in voice, verse and flows very easily from one page to the next. When Henry enters school at the age of six. The school declares him unteachable. With no money, his parents send him to Riverdale, a bleak institution where Henry is abused. When Victor, a conscientious objector to the war, comes to Riverdale, he sees Henry as far from unteachable. With Victor, Henry begins to see how things can change for the better. Again, this is called All He Knew. This next book is called Troll Bridge Road by Marcella Pixley. Set in 1983, at the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, June Bug Jordan is hungry and not just for food. Her father died from complications from AIDS and her mother stops cooking refuses to leave the, leave the house and locks herself away to scour the germs that she sees everywhere. June Bug threatens their existence by going out into the neighborhood, gradually befriending Ziggy, an imaginative boy who lives with his Nana Jean after experiencing troubles of his own. But as June Bug's connection to the world grows stronger, her mother grows more distant pushing June Bug to choose between truth and healing and the only home that she's ever known. And again, this is called Throw Bridge Road. My next book is called Elsie May Has Something to Say by Nancy J. Kovina. And two reviews for this book are Swamp Magic, by Kirkus Reviews, and Booklist says this book is an engaging story. Elsie May is thrilled to spend the summer at her grandparents' house. In the backyard, she finds a swamp named Okefenokee, 
an Indian name, and enjoys exploring there with her dog, Huck. When she realizes a shipping company will use the swamp and ruin the environment, Elsie writes to President Roosevelt, determined to save the swamp. She thinks the president will take care of the situation and she will become a local hero. When Elsie May hears about people stand, stealing from the community, she sees that as another way to make her family proud. When her cousin Henry James comes to visit, Elsie May finds out the hard way what a hero really does. And again, this book is called Elsie May Has Something to Say. Okay, this next book is called Space Chasers. It's by Emma Carroll. Based on the 1793 unveiling of the Montgolfier hot air balloon set in France for King Louis the 16th and many others to watch as it takes off. When a pickpocket named Magpie has an encounter with a boy, Paris, dangling from the sky, her life changes forever. She becomes involved with Pierre's family's plan to fly people in a hot air balloon for the first time. Can they succeed before someone else accomplishes this feat? Now remember, we're talking about the year 1793, and this story is called Spy Chasers. Okay. My next book is called Levin Lyman by Lisa Klein Ramsey. Ms. Klein Ramsey is a recipient of a Scott Coretta King Writing Honor and the winner of a Scott O'Dell Award for Historical Fiction. This story is the second in the trilogy called Finding Langs Langston. This takes place through the 1930s and 1940s. Do you ever wonder what makes a bully? Are they born? that way or made that way. Lyman's mother left when he was a baby and his father is in prison. And then his beloved grandfather just died. Lyman is uprooted three different times in pursuit of a home. The story explores grief, resilience, and the circumstances that can drive a boy to become a bully and offers a chance of redemption. Can Lyman learn to trust himself and his family again? And then the final story in this series is called Being Clam, which comes out in August of 2021 and follows Clem, who's a character in this book. Okay, now my next book is called Gold Rush, Gold Rush Girl by Avi, and he's a Newbery Award-winning author. Victoria, or Tori, as she prefers to be called, longs, longs for independence, adventure, and wants to accomplish, accompany her father and her brother, Jacob, as they set sail in 1848 to search for real gold. Of course, a young girl of that time, there weren't many things that she could do. Well, will that stop her? No. She sneaks aboard the ship with her own ideas of what San Francisco will look like. What do they find there? Mud, rain, tents, and more tents, fogs, and then her father goes off to search for gold while Tori and her brother are stuck in a tent. When Tori and two new friends come back from an errand, she finds Jacob kidnapped. The kidnappers want to use Jacob as a cabin boy on a ship going back east. Tori and her two new friends must find a way to rescue him before the ship sails. You'll find the details right on in this wonderfully crafted book. Again, it is called Gold Rush Girl. 
And then my next book is called Indian No More by Charlene Willing McKennis with Tracy Sorrell. And this is another, what we call own voices story. Ms. McKennis based this story on her own experience of the United States government deciding her tribe no longer exists. Growing up, Regina has only one concern. Does Bigfoot really roam out there in the woods? In 1957, Regina's life changes forever. Again, the United States government declares her tribe no longer exists. Unable to obtain a job, her father signs up for the Indian Recall Relocation Program and moves the family to Los Angeles. For the first time in her life, Regina meets people of other races and faces racism towards herself and her new friends. As you read this story, you'll see how Regina deals with racism and how she decides to define herself. At the end of this story, you'll find definitions of some words used throughout the story. Okay, so what I want to do now is just share some, oops, sorry, share our website. So you can see how to get around on our website. Okay, here we go, sorry. Okay, here we go. Now, this is our website here. And if you need to get on, you can either type the letters P G C M L S dot info, or in the search bar, type in Prince George County Memorial Library System, and then it'll bring up our link. And then there's two things I want to draw your attention to. The first one is called Overdrive. And let me show you that real quick. You would sign into your account, and then you would come on down and you can search for books. Uh, here we go. You would sign into your account here and then you click share search. You would type in a book and um, let's type in we dream, oops, spelling counts. We dream of space. Now we happen to have these books in an ebook form or a um, audio version where you can listen to it. And you would click borrow, and then you decide if you want to keep it one week, two weeks, or three weeks. Either way, doesn't matter because you know what happens at the end of the book? It will disappear off your card at the end of the time you choose so that no worries of like, oh no lost my book, oh no, the cat ate it, oh no, I dropped it in water. So that is nice. So, and then now, what I need to get into is the rest of showing you what I want to show you. So let me do share again, ta-ta. Ta -ta. Okay, so when you're doing projects for your teacher in school, over here it says it's online library. So you would click on that. Okay, and then you would come over here to the left side and you're going to see the words online resources again. So you click there. And then you will scroll down and you see, you'll see that we have many good websites and they're in alphabetical order and they are not Wikipedia or Google, which is important when you're turning something into your teacher because you want to use two facts. So I want to thank you all for joining me for another Children's Readers Advisory. Thanks. Bye.